It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For this video, I'm gonna respond to PragerU about separation of church and state. Now, I'm not gonna respond to the entire video because obviously it's too long to respond to every single entire point. However, if you guys are curious about the entire video, I have the link in the description box down below, as well as my personal citations to counter the claims that are in the video. So, without further hesitation, let us begin. Almost everyone has heard of the doctrine of the separation of church and state. Most Americans believe that it's in the United States Constitution. But there is no such phrase in the Constitution, and there never was, for a simple reason. The Founding Fathers never intended for church and state to be completely separate. Immediately, the premise of the video is that there is no such references of separation of church and state in the Constitution. However, that is further from the truth. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free expression thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or the press, or the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government. So what does the First Amendment mean? It basically covers the freedom of speech for all Americans, with the exception of excitement to violence. It covers freedom of the press, it covers the freedom to protest and to peacefully assembly, and also it covers separation of church and state, because it said at the beginning that the Congress shall not make an establishment of religion, and so although it did not directly say separation of church and state, and implies that they want a separation of church and state. The First Amendment Establishment Clause prohibit the government from making any law respecting an establishment of religion. This clause not only forbids the government from establishing an official religion, but also prohibits the government that unduly favor one religion over the other. It prohibits the government from unduly preferring one religion over non-religion or a non-religion of religion. In other words, it's entirely possible for people to practice their religion on a very private individual level. However, it is not for the government to force a state religion onto the people. And that includes stuff that are owned by the government, that are paid by government taxes, including public schools, hospitals, as well as like emergency services like police officers. Basically, the people that work for government cannot force any religion onto other people. So thanks to the Establishment Clause that was done by the First Amendment, the government cannot have any kind of favoritism when it comes down to organized religion or the lack thereof. In 1962, the Supreme Court struck another blow. It ruled in Engel v. Vitale that a generic school prayer violated the court's new definition of the First Amendment. Listen to the words of that school prayer. Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon Thee, and we beg Thy blessings upon us, our parents, our teachers, and our country. Amen. The main issue with that prayer is that it actually excludes people based upon the belief that they have. Of course, many people who cite that prayer at school probably do in fact believe in God. However, what about polytheists? What about atheists? Those two group of people, they don't believe in a single God. Of course, for my case, atheists, we don't believe in any kind of God at all, whereas polytheists believe in multiple gods. And so the assumption of the prayer actually assumes that a person believe in a single God. However, there are like tons and tons of students who probably do not believe in a single God and probably believe in multiple gods or no God at all. So that's the main reason why that prayer is also troubling. I also find it curious that, of course, you try to argue in favor of prayer that was sanctioned by teachers. However, what if a person who was part of the Islamic faith did the exact same thing to your kids? Would you actually appreciate it if a Muslim tried to teach the kids the Quran? So what makes this no different than what you're trying to propose? Because basically, no one is actually not allowing kids to pray. Kids can actually pray if they want to. However, teachers and leaders of that school are not allowed to have group prayer or state-sanctioned prayer because ultimately, it's not up to the teachers to force your own personal beliefs onto the students. The prayer was not specific to Christianity or to any religion. Since then, 
The separation of church and state metaphor has been used to remove God and religion piece by piece from American public life. How is separation of church and state the same thing as removing Christianity from our whole entire society? Because the last time I checked, the majority of Americans are Christians while a minority of Americans are non-religious. So that means there's like tons and tons and tons of churches. There's ton of Sunday schools. There's ton of private universities, ton of private schools. There's pretty much Christianity all across our whole entire society. So separation of church and state just means separating the church from the state. It does not mean there's no God at all in society. How we can mix the two up, I don't understand. Are we a better society for it? It's hard to argue that we are. Almost every cultural and ethical indicator, marriage rates, birth rates, the number of Americans giving to charity, has declined since God and religion have faded from American life. Marriage rates, birth rates, and charities depend on like a number of different factors, and it's not just because of God either. For the case of marriage, we know for a fact that the whole entire system is built against men. So if a woman were to divorce a man, they lost their property rights and stuff, they lose their kids, and so men are pretty much screwed no matter what with the whole entire marriage system. Not to mention, of course, couples probably are abusive, they probably are miserable, and so that's why people also probably would not want to have the same sort of marriage for years and years and years. As far as like younger people, like millennials, I think the main reason why so many millennials do not want to get married is because a lot of, the, a lot of us are actually poor. We live in our houses with our parents, and also we're going to college right now. And so people are probably focusing on their careers. As far as like birth rates, again, that's entirely based upon, of course, people's personal choices. Not everybody wanna have kids. And the main reason why not everybody wanna have kids is because some people are just not suitable to have kids. And some people, of course, wanna have kids, but Obviously, we're not in a financial situation right now to actually afford kids. So there's like a lot of reasons on why people have those kind of things. So yeah, as far as the data for charity, it said that most Americans are perhaps the most charitable people in the entire world. We're at number one. And so even if the rates of charity might go down or whatever, we're still the number one charitable country in the entire planet. Meanwhile, Children without fathers in their lives, behavioral problems in schools, and crime have gone up dramatically. How did you get to the conclusion that crime is actually increasing because of the lack of religion? Because the data shows right now that crime are actually in the decrease as I speak right now. So it could be like a number of different factors. We know for a fact that stuff like movies or video games or whatever are like an outlet for people to have their frustration out. And so the more and more people probably play video games or watch movies, probably the main reason why it also probably got down. There's probably other different factors too. As far as like stuff like fatherlessness and these other kind of issues, again, how do you know for a fact that it's because of the lack of religion? Because I don't think that correlation is not causations. So unless you can actually prove that fatherlessness as well as these other kind of stuff is because of the lack of religion, citation is needed because I cannot find any data to show because of the lack of religion, that's the main reason why so many stuff is going bad. Marriage rates, birth rates, the number of Americans giving to charity has declined since God and religion have faded from American life. Meanwhile, Children without fathers in their lives, behavioral problems in schools, and crime have gone up dramatically. And all because of one vote in one court case based on one sentence in one letter. So let me get this straight. You're saying because of a court case that settled a case about separation of church and state, stuff actually got on the rise for crime and this all kind of bad stuff going on right now. And because of that court case, we should have more religious influence? That does not make any sense. 
That does not make any sense at all because we know for a fact that the main reason why people left Europe to go to this country is because of religious persecution. It's because people were persecuted because of the state religion. And we know for a fact to this very day that theocracies like Islamic theocracies are very much run by religion and people are being oppressed by that. And so people who came to this country, they left because they don't want to have some sort of persecution. And you're saying that we should probably get back to that whole entire period where there was like no separation at all. Of course, I don't want to put your words into my mouth or whatever, but like still, that's like a terrible idea. A terrible idea. There's a main reason why people separate church and state. And so obviously, this whole entire idea, because of one court case, that's why all the ills of the society goes bad, has no basis in reality. Because you have not proven any data at all to prove your point. But anyway, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And I'll talk to you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.